Welcome to Coffee Break with Researchers. Today, I'm having a coffee break with Carolina Ospring. She's an Associate Senior Lecturer at the Department of Food Technology, Engineering and Nutrition at Lund University. Coffee Break with Researchers presents you with unique insights from the world of academia and higher education. We ask researchers directly and in a personal manner about their work. We make scientific knowledge accessible to all. Carolina, thank you very much for accepting this invitation to a coffee break. How are you doing? I'm very fine, thank you. It's a kind of grey morning, as it is in Sweden in January, but it's fine. Actually, I'm very happy today we have sun in Vienna, finally. So it's great to know. Wow. <laughs> I'm having a Colombian black coffee today. Which one are you having? It's something uh, dark and uh, kind of heavy roasted. I like it black and tart. Same here. Uh, Carolina, I want to talk with you today about uh, the curse for food myths and molecules in which you investigate the relationship, the different dimensions of food and sustainability. Can you please tell me what the course is about? It is a course uh, that kind of guides the students into different aspects of food. So we integrate food chemistry, food physics, health and food, the link between those two and also food processing, how food is actually produced inside food factories. And of course, also the link to sustainability in a module called Food in the Future. That's indeed very, very important. And uh, why do you think um, it was so relevant to develop such a course? The sustainability development goals, they are so important, not only as a paper product, because it's real problems that we really need to solve now and in the future. And for me, it was really, really important to bring that into my course and uh, teach the students how food and uh, climate changes are interconnected. And thinking exactly about that, about the students, which ones will you say are the most valuable insights they can get from their course? The most and major uh, link to the sustainability development goals is the fight the climate changes, which uh, I address in the last section. And then we talk about wh why food is affecting the climate and uh, kind of alternative approaches to also reduce the impact of the food sector. But I also cover good health and well being, goal number three. And uh, that I do in the connection between food and health. So I learn the students how to analyze their own food intake and uh, see that that is in line with the regulations or recommendations of how we should eat to have a healthy life. And uh, I also touch upon gender equality, both because it's very important for me and uh, also for most of us. And, uh, it comes into the course when I explain the marvelous uh, transition from open herds, fires that we cook our food over, to the electric stuffs that we have, and also kind of emphasize what that means to women liberation and how much work that was now uh, kind of reduced from women in history. And the last goal that I'm touching upon is industry, innovation and infrastructure. And then I kind of uh, learn the students how the industry is reducing the energy in their production, which is not really, we are not able to do that you know, in our own house, houses or homes. Uh, so by, by energy usage, uh, it is better to cook food in the industry for many peoples. But that sounds uh, fascinating. I imagine it has a, a very high practical component, right? Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, methodology that you use in developing the course? Yes, it's an online course and uh, I give lectures that is pre-recorded and the students watch the videos and then uh, they do a home exercise in their own kitchen. It is very good to have food as subject because we all eat at least three times a day. So that the students are cooking an experiment that is linked to the theory in each part of the course. For example, in the module when I talk about the link between food and health, 
they are measuring exactly how much food they eat uh, on one day and then calculate the nutrition in it and compare it to the guidelines that we have. And uh, in, the, in, the, in another section of the course, they do an experiment where they compare how plant-based cheese uh, behave in comparison to ordinary cheese. So we can kind of very uh, really investigate the differences and also the obstacles in making plant-based cheese. Oh, that sounds fascinating. I imagine that this, with the current situation, having an online course in, in these circumstances can be quite challenging. Can you please share some of your experiences with students in an online environment in, in the course? Yes, uh, I was a bit nervous before I started because it's my first online course, but it turned out to be really, really good. And uh, the students watched my videos and then we had a seminar eight times during the course. And uh, I found that they also communicated with me in their lab reports. So it was a kind of living document where they asked me questions and then uh, I prepared answer that I gave to all the students on the seminars. So they really find ways to communicate with me that I had not expected. I can imagine. And um, oh, Carolina, those were all my questions. Thank you very much for your time and for explaining this fascinating course on food. And I wish you all the best with it and hope to see you next time in a coffee break. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. If you're interested in more details about this course, you can find the link here below. See you next time. Bye-bye.